The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Hello, everyone. This is Katie Roper with Caring.com, and I'm delighted to welcome you to the latest in Caring's Digital Marketing Academy series of webinars. This one's on getting ready for the lead rush, including best practices for converting Internet leads. Before we get started today, as usual, we're going to have a few housekeeping items. The presentation will be available within a few business days. We'll send you the slides and also a recording that you can share with your colleagues. Also, as always, this is a one-way webcast. But we do encourage you to ask questions. We'll have a whole Q&A session at the end. Um, if you want to ask a question, just use the question pane in the GoToWebinar control panel that you see on the right-hand side of your screen. Type your question in there, and we'll get to it at the end of our uh, presentation today. Also, since this is a free webinar, you get to listen to the uh, commercial before we get started. Um, Caring.com is the company running this webinar. Um, it's the company that I've worked for now for um, coming up on 10 years, which is kind of amazing. Um, we are the largest site specifically targeting family caregivers online. Um, we have the most senior care reviews, uh, over 125,000 consumer reviews right now on all different aspects of senior care. We get about 3 million people every single month coming to our site. They are coming to read thousands of original articles, to search for care from our 70,000 listings, um, to engage with other caregivers in, in uh, dozens of online support groups. And um, we are part of Bankrate's powerful network of websites uh, covering everything from uh, personal finance to credit cards um, to now senior care. Um, here's me. I'll be presenting the first part of today. Um, as I mentioned, uh, I joined Carrie.com a long time ago now, uh, after 25 prior years in high-tech sales. Um, and uh, despite all of the great content and tools on the website, um, I have not had great success in getting either my mother or my mother-in-law um, to consider any sort of non-family senior care services. And in fact, I can't even get them to consider family care, um, which is a whole other topic. So um, buy me a drink the next time you see me at the conference, and I'll share my stories with you. Um, the second half of our presentation today is going to be my uh, partner in crime and very valuable colleague, Denise Grob. Um, she is uh, also a longtime caring employee uh, with 20 years in communications. Um, she knows more about social marketing than anybody I've ever met, and I have learned so much from her, and I'm thrilled that you'll be able to learn from her too. Um, she'll cover the part of our uh, presentation on consumer reviews, which is the second half. Um, speaking of which, here's our agenda for today. We're initially, we're going to go through a quick uh, review of Caring.com and what we do to screen the internet leads before we send them to you. Um, we covered this in incredible detail last month on a, a webinar that we call Ask Me Anything, where people actually got to ask questions of our family advisors. It was a great webinar. If you're interested in more detail, we're going to go very quickly through this part. But if you're interested in more detail, um, you can find a link to the recording on our partner blog. And um, you can listen to that uh, as, and get as much gory detail as you'd like. Um, then we'll talk about what happens when we send the referrals on to you, our senior care partners. Um, and what I'm going to do here is talk about some of the things that we see from our partners handling the leads that we send them. We'll talk about best practices for phone calls, best practices for email, and best practices if you've got a high volume of leads. I'm going to apologize in advance. A lot of the data that we talk about when we'll talk about best practices is from our senior housing partners. And I know 
Um, we have many home care agencies who are partnered with us and who are on our webinar. And they hate it when I only talk about senior housing. So I'm very sorry. But because of the way we do business, on senior housing, we know which leads that caring generates end up turning into move-ins. So we can track conversion rate much more carefully. Our home care agency partners don't provide us with that level of, of detail. So we don't know exactly which leads um, turn into starts of care for our home care partners. That makes it harder for us to show you the data that proves what we're talking about. So I will definitely talk about conversion on home care leads, um, but most of it is going to be anecdotal based on conversations with our home care partners, whereas on the senior housing side, I can actually show you data. Um, after that, we're going to talk about um, how to put your best foot forward with reviews. It's a little bit off topic to talk about reviews in a, in a best practices for lead handling webinar, but this is a webinar on conversions. And what we've seen is that having reviews online is absolutely key to converting the leads. Um, almost, almost more so than any specific lead handling practices that you can do. So uh, Denise will talk about that when we get to it. Then we'll have a full Q&A session and um, talk about the key takeaways and our next webinar. Um, but before we get into this, um, I am going to launch a little poll here. So bear with me. It's always uh, a little bit crazy. Um, but here you go. Um, you'll see here a poll. And what I'd like to do is ask which of these is true for you regarding Internet leads. Um, so we'll see where people come in. And I, and I will share this data with you as soon as we get it. Um, at this point, I would encourage you to uh, click the button, um, and we'll see which is true. Uh, we've got about 30% uh, of people having voted right now. Um, so uh, there's lots of talk in, in the senior housing industry now about do you want more leads? Are more leads good? Would you want fewer leads? Um, we've had partners say, I want fewer leads. Uh, but I want just as many move-ins, and of course that's really <laughs> kind of hard to get. Um, and uh, let's see, oh, I'm getting a, a question here, a late attendee asking about whether the presentation will be recorded, and the answer is yes, we will be recording this presentation. We will send it out to everybody who's registered, um, a link to the YouTube video, as well as a link to the slide presentation. All right, we've got about 75% of people voting. Um, looks like things are slowing down. So I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. Thank you to everyone who participated. And um, share the results with you. And it looks like pretty much everybody would take more leads if they knew where to get them. OK, interesting. Um, thanks so much for that. Um, I am going to take a quick out here and um, see if I can close out the poll. And we'll go back to Closed. Okay. So now we're closed. Um, sorry about this. We're having technical difficulties here. Um, okay. There we go. All right. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, okay, on with the show. Um, a quick overview of caring.com and how we get leads for you and send them out to all those people who want more of them. Um, caring gets leads from a number of different places. Uh, on one big source of leads for us is partnerships with other websites. Uh, so 
uh, seniorhomes.com, aarp.org, and a number of other places use our directory to power their own directory. Um, when you get leads from caring.com, they may be coming from a different place, but you wouldn't know it because to partners, they all look the same. Um, if we're not getting a lead from a partner, most likely it's coming from caring content. Um, people go to Google and uh, they'll type in whatever their question is. Does the VA pay for in-home care? Uh, signs of Alzheimer's? Should mom stop driving? Uh, here's a case of what is sundown syndrome. They find content on the site. Once they find the content, you can see an example down here, um, bottom right hand corner, home care options explained. Um, we go through with them all the different options that they have to get care at home, why they might want one or another. And then um, when it's appropriate, we refer them to our directory to find home care agencies or senior housing communities, depending which is appropriate. Um, we get tens of thousands of those pre-screen leads every month. Uh, I think uh, it's usually someplace between 50,000 and 60,000 leads coming from all those different sources. Um, some number of them are not actually valid. Um, there's somebody who's put in an incorrect phone number. Maybe it's Nikki at mouse.com. Um, maybe it's a job seeker. Maybe it's somebody who's actually looking for pet sitting. Um, so uh, about 60% of them end up being valid inquiries and get routed to a family advisor in our call center. We use technology to screen out, to make that first screen. Um, then we use people. And our family advisors ask all sorts of uh, qualifying questions to find out what sort of care people need, when they need it, and make sure that they have the resources to pay. Um, once we've screened and qualified, we send those on to our partners, um, providing care across the whole spectrum. And um, uh, only about 25% of the people we talk to end up being uh, referred out to partners. So once you get a lead from Caring.com, it's passed a pretty high qualification bar. Um, and that qualification is pretty similar for both home care and senior housing. You know if we're sending them to you that these are people with appropriate care needs. If you're a home health provider, they need medical care. Um, if you're a, a, an independent living community, they are capable of living on their own. You know that they have private pay funds to cover what we have listed as your costs. Um, Sometimes we have inaccurate data, so if that's the case, use that provide feedback button on the lead email and let us know that this is too low, um, but mostly we get that right. And finally, this is really important. Anybody we send you is expecting to be contacted by communities and or home care agencies to discuss options further. So, before we hang up the phone, our family advisors make sure that the person understands that they are going to get phone calls. So hopefully, when you do follow up with these people, they, they understand who you are and why you're calling. All right, so we've sent you a lead. It's screened and qualified. It's a good fit for your services. Now what do you do? Let's take a quick step back and just think about who are these internet leads. This is data from Caring's customer journey survey. We do this every year. Again, we did a whole webinar on this a couple months ago. If you want more data, um, go to the partner blog, have a look at our past webinars, and find the customer journey survey. There's a lot of really good stuff in there. Um, but for our purposes today, I think it's worth covering off a few of the really salient points. Um, most likely, the person who we send you is an adult daughter, and most likely she's in her 50s. About 60% of the leads are adult children. Um, over 70% of those are women. Um, and I'm guessing that this is the same sort of thing that you see on your own website. Just the 50-year-old women who are using the internet, maybe not so much the 85-year-old mom or mother-in-law. Um, 
often still working. At least 50% of the people uh, who answered caring.com survey are still working, and 35% are still working full time. They're also more likely than not to have been prompted to fill out a leave form today by a medical situation. Um, we, this year we saw 70% of people saying that the reason they decided on care for their loved one was because of a change in medical situation. That's actually up from 60% last year. Um, it's also the same uh, level that we've seen in CCRC residents specific surveys like the one from Varsity Branding. 60% um, of CCRC residents chose to make a move because of concerns about a medical situation. So um, the medical needs are definitely driving uh, these internet searches. Another uh, very consistent data point is that 40% of the people online searching for care don't know of their local options. Uh, partly that's because they don't live in the same community. Over a third of the people searching online do not live local to the person in need of care. Um, sometimes it's just because they haven't been paying attention. So they haven't seen the, the, the billboard or they haven't noticed the billboard for the home care agency or they've driven right by that Sunrise community for years and never really paid attention to the fact it was there. Um, and then finally, these, these internet researchers, it's, it's kind of a given, but they are doing research before they call. Um, they're reading reviews, they're checking out your website, they're investigating your online reputation, and they're choosing to fill out a leave form. So what does this mean for you when you're following up on these leads? Well, um, if you're talking to the adult daughter, it's likely that she's not the sole decision maker. There are probably other siblings. I've seen research that says many of the people moving into senior housing now have four, three or four adult children. That's certainly the case in, in mine and my husband's families. Um, so there are probably other siblings involved, and there's at least the adult daughter and the older person, him or herself. So uh, you're not generally talking about a situation where one person can make a decision right now. There may need to be some socialization going on between the adult child and the older person. There may need to be some sibling conversations. Should we really do this? Is it too much money to spend? Um, does the sister want to take care of mom herself? Um, so it can take a while. And there can be multiple decision makers involved in this case. So when you think about responding to an internet lead, one thing you want to think about is how can you empower this person who you're talking to to take the information back to other family members so that they can make a group decision. That's a little bit different from trying to convince her herself. Um, the fact that the person filling out this internet lead form is often still working means that they're definitely not sitting around waiting to answer the phone. Um, it, it, what I see in our office and what I think is true in a lot of offices is um, people you know, sort of expect it's OK if every now and then you know, during your lunch break or uh, even during work hours, you take a few minutes and do some personal web surfing. But I know I'm fairly hesitant to take a personal phone call at work. And I think most of my colleagues are, too. So while somebody may be filling out lead forms, they may not want to answer their cell phone when it calls, when, when it rings. Um, so you may need to call them off hours or on the weekend. Or you may need to have your interaction driven by email. Um, if they're among the 60 or 70 percent of people prompted by a medical situation, they may be stressed, confused, pressed for time. Uh, I'm sure this is not news to anybody on this call. Um, finally, if they don't know the local options, make sure that you uh, lay out that context for them. You can say you're right next to the hospital, but if they don't know where the hospital is, it's not going to be useful for them to know that. So I can't tell you how many senior community websites I've been to where they don't have their address. They don't have the address of the property. 
Um, this is, you cannot assume that somebody finding you online knows where you are. Um, and then, of course, the fact that she's doing her research before she contacts you means that your first goal needs to be get, to get into her consideration set. Um, this is something that Caring can help our partners with, but there are lots of other things you can do. And if you make a good first impression, she's going to be much more likely to call you back and not one of your competitors. Um, the other thing to remember is that online, everybody is one click away from everybody else. So um, if you don't get back to the person in a timely fashion, she's going to hit the back button, she's going to go to Google, and she's going to find the next person, the next company down in those search results. So there is no such thing as an exclusive lead anymore online. Um, so the, the first thing about internet leads, and the thing that everybody knows about internet leads, and I'm sure you know it too, is the importance of speed to lead. This is some data from Velocify, which is a company that has a, a, a contact management system. Um, this data is from many, many different industries, all of Velocify's customers all across the internet. So some of this is business to business marketing, some of it's business to consumer marketing, it's big ticket items, it's small ticket items, it doesn't matter. If you contact that lead in the first minute, you are 400 times, 400% uh, more likely, that's four times more likely to close that lead than if you wait 24 hours. Um, this is very consistent with what Caring sees in our call center. We contact most people within about 15 seconds. Um, what's really startling is that enormous drop between calling in one minute and calling in two minutes. You can see that you're less than half as likely to end up closing the lead if you wait one extra minute before you call. Um, that's pretty shocking. So uh, this is data across all industries. What about senior care? Um, I'm going to take you through this slide. It's a little bit confusing, so I'm going to go slowly. <laughs> Um, and back up. And again, I apologize to the home care agencies on this call, but with home care leads, we don't know which ones turn into starts of care and which ones don't. With senior housing leads, we do. So we can draw a lot more detailed, data-driven conclusions about our senior housing leads than we can our home care leads, and I wanted to share those with you. So this is actual data from Caring.com's Mystery Shop. We have a service that we provide to our senior housing uh, partners where uh, we, we make up a lead, we make up a hot lead, somebody really in need of, of housing right then, and we send it out to all their communities. And then we measure how quickly those communities call back and how quickly they email back and how frequently they email and call. And then we can compare that to the conversion rate on the real leads that we send them. So obviously a mystery shop lead is never going to turn into a move-in, but the 130 other leads that we've sent them this year will. And what we see, when we look at communities uh, responding to those mystery shop leads, if you, if you don't make any calls to that mystery shop lead in the first hour, you still are converting some of caring leads. Um, your conversion rate is not zero. And, you know, frankly, it's a mystery shop. Maybe somebody was having a bad day. Maybe their usual salesperson was on vacation. Maybe they're ordinarily great at handling leads and it was just off for some reason. Um, but across all of our partners, if you make zero call attempts within the first hour, one call attempt or two call attempts, you can see where your conversion rate is. It's definitely going up with each additional attempt, but not hugely so. But if you look at communities who made three call attempts to that Mr. Shop lead in the first hour after we sent it, they, have, they are twice as likely to convert the other leads that we send. That's what a 102% conversion rate increase means. So on all of those 136 other leads we've sent them, they are twice as likely to actually get a move in, assuming that they handle the other calls with the same 
the, the other leads with the same urgency that they handled those, in, those uh, mystery shop leads. So that's pretty dramatic. And this is aggregate detail. This is not just one community. This is across all of our partner communities who are doing mystery shops. So, you know, thousands of communities. Um, there is also, uh, most people know that you need to call repeatedly. And sometimes uh, you want to call not just today, but tomorrow. Um, I get people asking, well, you know, I don't want to bother them. Should I call today and then call again in 24 hours? And the answer is yes. What you can see here is that each additional call attempt increases the likelihood that you're going to convert that lead. But again, the communities that made three call attempts within the first hour have a significantly higher conversion rate on carrying leads than the communities that made three call attempts within 72 hours. Three call attempts within 72 hours is better than two call attempts within 72 hours. But three call attempts in that first hour so overwhelmingly dwarfs anything else that is the single best thing you can do if you want to convert internet leads. Um, so what about home care? I don't want to leave you guys out. Um, as I mentioned, we don't have nearly as, as detailed data on home care leads because our home care partners generally don't tell us which ones have started care. But what we have seen is that it's really important when you contact the leads we send that you provide actual value in your outreach. Don't just call and call and call and leave uh, the same voicemail message over and over and over. Reference the notes that we send. Um, mention the person by name. Mention their loved one by name. Say, I'd love to help you with your mom. When you send an email, if, they, if the family advisor has noted specific questions that they have, be sure you mention uh, the answers to those questions in your responses. Um, one very interesting piece of data we have on home care leads came from a client of ours. Um, this client is a very savvy internet marketer, and he is running a national program for home care leads. And what he found, um, he has a website. This is data from, from not caring.com, but a different website. And um, obviously, some of the people who come to this organization's website right away turn into leads. But some number of them don't. And the ones that don't fill out a lead form right away, um, this organization uses some internet technology called Cookie, which is a little piece of code that identifies who that person is. Obviously, they don't know it's Katie. But they do know that this particular person using this particular computer has visited their website. And what they saw is that People come to their website and they read up on things, and then they go away. Day two, they stay away. Day three, they stay away. Day six, they stay away. But interestingly, someplace about 10 days out, there is a big spike of people coming back to the website. And that time, they do fill out the lead form. What that says to me, um, what I've seen in my own family, is that as I mentioned, it takes a while. My husband uh, has three siblings, so they're four children all together. There are a lot of phone calls that happen um, to try and get everybody on board and everybody in agreement on what needs to happen with my mother-in-law. That can take about 10 days. That person, may, the, the person who submitted the inquiry may not want to talk to a salesperson until after she's had a chance to talk to her brothers and sisters talk to her mom or dad, um, talk to other people. And then about 10 days later, she's finally ready to get that sales call. Um, so it is very, very worth your time as a home care agency, if, even if you don't reach that person in the first day, to try again someplace between 10 days and two weeks later. You may find that they're much more willing to, to take your call. And I bet you'll be the only agency calling them at that point, because everybody else has given up. Um, finally, don't forget email. And we'll talk a little bit more here about email. Um, 
this is data from a couple of internet um, digital marketing agencies. The first one is from Experian Marketing Services. And what they found is across all digital marketing, there is a six-fold increase in conversion if you send a personalized email message. So again, this is not senior care. This is all across the web. Another digital marketing organization called Social Fish found that three in five customers feel better about a brand when their communication from that company is personalized. Now, I don't know about you, but I, over the last couple weeks, have gotten lots and lots and lots and lots of uh, marketing emails um, from various uh, websites. And um, I'm sure you are too, and I'm sure you're still getting them, um, websites talking to you about buying things. And see how you feel when you get that um, the, the email message that says, you know, here's our list of specials that clearly they sent the same one to uh, the other five million people on their list versus the one that says, hey, Katie, since you bought such and such product two weeks ago, you might be interested in this one as well. So how does that translate into senior care? Um, again, I'm going to go back to the mystery shop data, and this says that Communities who responded to a mystery shop lead using a custom follow-up, in other words, referencing the detailed notes in that mystery shop lead, those communities have 44% higher conversion rate than the communities that relied on a canned response. Um, again, you'll see speed to lead. Communities using a custom follow-up within 60 minutes have a 21% higher conversion rate than those using a custom follow-up within 24 hours. Again, their speed to lead is relevant even for email. And finally, persistence. Communities with three custom touches in 72 hours have a 49% better conversion rate than those that do not follow this practice. So again, here you can see in the data, this is aggregate data across all the communities that we were mystery shopping. But using personalized custom follow-up with references to that person's specific situation of a much higher conversion rate than those that don't. What about voicemail? Well, um, I see uh, actually a question has come in about should we leave a message if we don't reach the lead or wait to get a live voice? Well, I've written a whole series of posts on our blog about voicemail. I'm a salesperson. I call um, many of you on this call, I've called you many times in the past trying to get you to uh, list your communities with caring.com. And I have to say, nobody ever calls me back. Um, I, I can't even remember the number of times that, that um, someone's called me back. But honestly, I don't call them back either. And I'm a salesperson. I want to get, get people in touch with me. But um, I went on vacation this summer. And I put an out-of-office responder on my email, but I didn't bother to change my voicemail. And boy, when I started in sales, I changed my voicemail every day. Um, but now, you know, I can go away for 10 days and not even bother changing my message. I just forgot about it. It's so not a part of my day-to-day my -day existence. Um, and then uh, I recently called a, a gal who I've been working with for a number of years now. She's a client of ours. And her voicemail still has her maiden name on it. She's been married for, I don't know, close to two years now. So that tells me that she doesn't use her voicemail much either. Voicemail's dead. Forget about it. I mean, you're welcome to leave a message if you want, and maybe they'll call you back, but don't count on it. And certainly don't spend a lot of time uh, listing out all of your features and benefits in the voicemail message. Name, phone number, I'd love to help you. Uh, with your mom's transportation needs, that's all you need to say. All right, um, so we've talked a lot about how to handle leads, and if you have all the time in the world and can call everybody three times in the first hour, that's fantastic. But what do you do in January? How do you handle things when you get a whole flood of leads coming in, and on top of that, you're busy with all the other things you need to do? 
What I'd like to do now is share with you some of the things that we've seen clients doing to handle lead prioritization uh, when they get busy. So the first thing is to apply intelligence to these leads. Um, I saw somebody say three calls in an hour seems crazy. And, you know, yeah, I can see that. But you don't want to make three calls in an hour to somebody who says, well, I'm not really sure. I'm just sort of kicking the tires. Um, but, you know, let's, let's take a look at this one. This is somebody who has an urgent enough need that they want to schedule a tour. So obviously, uh, this is one that you should definitely prioritize. But if you go to the notes that our family advisor left about this family, let's see what they say. And I realize this is kind of hard to read for many of you, um, but I've highlighted some of the key elements and, and drawn them out. Um, the first one is, uh, this is for Betty, age 75, and she's looking to make a move this coming year because she doesn't feel safe. Wow, that's a pretty significant uh, indication that there's something going on here. Not feeling safe is a real reason that somebody would move. Um, you can see that she is very interested in having transportation services because she recently stopped driving. And you can see that she is working with a $2,200 budget. If your community um, would be a good fit for somebody who can afford that much in a month, um, this is probably a pretty good lead. This one's worth a few calls in that first hour, um, especially because they've got a tour schedule. Here's another one. Um, this one is not a tour lead, uh, but this one's a pretty hot lead. Um, the first thing to see about this is this is for Kim, age 61, looking for an assisted living community for herself. Now, not everybody can take someone who's age 61. If that's not possible for you, please, please use that provide feedback button that's located in every lead email. If you click on that and let us know, we can make a note in your profile and we won't send you anyone who's 61 years old and we'll refer him to a different community. Um, but if you can admit someone who's age 61, this looks like a pretty good lead. Um, she's in constant pain, she needs assistance with bathing and dressing, and she says she will move immediately if she finds a perfect fit. Um, that is another pretty good buying signal. Now one thing here, it says please email your information to Kim. If you read the notes, you'll see that Kim has a chronic jaw infection and is in constant pain. That's why she's looking to move even though she's only age 61. If you had constant pain in your jaw, you probably wouldn't be that enthusiastic about talking to a salesperson on the phone. Kim is going to get a much better impression of you and your community if you send her a fantastic email message, personalized, including the information that she needs. Send it right away. Send it repeatedly. But maybe don't try as hard to make those three calls in the first hour because Kim probably won't appreciate that. Let her reach out to you if she's feeling up to it um, for a voice-to-voice -voice call. Um, here's the home care lead. One of the things that came up um, in our family advisor Ask Me Anything session last month was a bunch of home care people saying, well, do you, is the qualification process different between home care and assisted living? And the answer is no. Um, our family advisors speak to the families, ask the same sorts of questions, and write up the same notes. So here are some notes from a home care lead. And this is, this is actually a layup shot for you. Um, the family advisor wrote in great big capital letters, this is an urgent need. So this is one that you should call three times in an hour. Let's read the notes. Um, Maria needs to be back at work on Monday. Um, that's a pretty urgent situation. She needs assistance five days a week, Monday through Friday. That's going to be long hours for you. This is the uh, ideal situation for many of your, your caregiver employees. Long days, same company, Monday through Friday. 
And she's got a pretty realistic budget of $3,000 per month. Um, if it were me, I'd be calling this one pretty repeatedly for a long time. Um, so once you have actually prioritized the leads, if you still have too many of them, what can you do? Well, the first thing that I would strongly suggest is, is use LIFO. This is a, a manufacturing acronym, a, 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 a manufacturing thing that's last in, first out, right? If you're, if you're managing inventory, you can either do first in, first out, in which case you use the oldest thing first, or you can do last in, first out, meaning that you call the newest one first. And in the case of internet leads, you should definitely use LIFO. If you come in on Monday morning and you have six leads backed up because you weren't there over the weekend and you get a new one coming in right away, call that Monday morning one before you call the Saturday afternoon one. Again, go back to those graphs. You're so much more likely to convert a lead if you reach them really, really quickly. Um, once they've aged, it doesn't make that much difference if it's six hours late or 24 hours late. Um, you're much better off to get the, hot, the, the new ones first. We've talked a lot about using intelligence to prioritize the lead. Um, one really good thing to think about for January, and um, you've got some time now, but think about what sort of non-selling tasks can you delay. Can you get some things done ahead of time um, so that you don't have to do those things in January? Another really good idea is to um, you know, bring in some, some other people. Maybe as a salesperson, you want to be sure that you can uh, get to all of those leads. Maybe you ask somebody else uh, in the company to go out and do some of your community presentations or your lunch and learn. Maybe you don't schedule a lunch and learn in January. Maybe you wait. Um, another thing that can help you make more efficient use of your time is to keep your communication really short. Um, nobody wants to read, you know, a 10 paragraph long email message. People just don't read. People don't listen to voicemail, so don't make them. Um, keep things really short, and um, but make sure it's personalized, and in everything put a call to action. I'd love to, instead of sending over a whole brochure, say something like, um, it, you know, I'd love to, we have two bedrooms and one bedroom, I'd love to show you the difference, could you come in for a tour? So instead of sending a whole brochure, which you know they're not going to look at anyway, um, try to get them to come in for a tour when you communicate with them. All right, um, so hopefully I've given you some ideas for uh, how, for what you can do with these leads. Um, what I'm going to do now is turn things over to Denise because we really, really do see very measurable um, evidence of the impact of reviews on, on lead conversion and Denise is going to talk to you some about that now. Okay, great. And many of you uh, may have attended our recent webinar a few months ago, so I apologize if some of this is a repeat. And I want to save time for questions on the lead conversion as well. So if I move quickly too quickly for you, we can connect afterward. I can send you the full recording from the last session, and we have another one coming up. So we, I can dive into more detail for those of you that this isn't a repeat or you want more information um, given the short amount of time we have to cover this now. Um, you probably know from your own experience, people are shopping for nearly everything online these days. Uh, and 92% of U.S. consumers today are reading online reviews to help them even when they're not buying those products online. Uh, that stat is from a Bright Local survey, and they are a search marketing agency they do an annual survey. Um, that's, you may say, oh, that's a pretty high number. There's lots of other surveys as well that have seen similar numbers of people using online reviews to research products and services um, before making a decision. And they're not just doing it for shoes, hotels, and other products. They're also doing it for senior care. Uh, just in the last few years at caring.com, we've seen them skipping listings that don't have reviews. Um, we've seen the 
dramatic increases in inquiries, uh, tours and move-ins for senior living communities when they have a high volume of reviews. Uh, and we're also seeing that reviews are driving inquiries for home care agencies. And I'm going to give you a couple examples. This is a case study we did with a senior living partner that had over 100 listings on our site. Uh, we pulled the data for them and we saw, oh, and by the way, their reviews, they had about an 80-20% in negative to positive. So neg negative reviews did not prevent the inquiries. Uh, as you can see here, uh, looking at this, there are listings that had 15, more, 15 or more reviews, both positive and negative, had five times more leads per listing and seven times more tours and eight times more move-ins than listings that only had one or two reviews. And the ones that had zero had even uh, less impact. So reviews are extremely important in senior living particularly when you consider the impact of tours on the move-in. It's also making a difference in home care. Uh, Katie has talked a lot about making a good impression. Uh, and reviews not only make a good impression, they help the online consumer narrow their options, particularly when there's many and they're not familiar with them. Um, and in home care, in particular, um, it, it's more, they may not know the agency's location is not going to be as important. They want to hear from other people. Um, so you'll see here, this is another case study we did for a home care company that had over 100 listings on our site. Um, they had um, their listings that had 15 or more reviews got one and a half times more leads than their listings that only had one or two reviews. And similar to the senior living study, uh, they had a nice split of 80 to 20 on positive to negative reviews. Um, so this is not uh, impact from no negative reviews. Uh, it's both positive and negative. The consumer wants to see what other people, just like them, uh, their experience with your services. It's so important uh, in the home care side, as I mentioned. Uh, less in senior living location may be more of the priority. They want to have a senior living community near their home or near their parents' current neighborhood or maybe near their parents' favorite doctors or shopping centers. In home care, the service is in their existing home, so they're more interested in that feedback in those reviews. Um, so, and based on years of studying this and the data that we've seen, we are now sorting our home care directory using a review filter. This was news we announced um, earlier this year. Uh, it took place, this, this change took place in September. Uh, you'll now see on caring.com that parent, partner listings with the most reviews uh, and the best ratings rank highest in the search results. So if you're a home care agency, you really need to make sure that you get some great consumer reviews on your listing as soon as possible. All right, um, you may be feeling overwhelmed. Okay, you may understand that reviews are important, but there's so many review sites out there, where do you focus? We turn to senior care searchers online and ask them, which sites do they trust most for senior care reviews? Um, and as you see from this data, about half uh, most trust senior care websites, which makes sense. Uh, consider sites like caring.com, we're using humans rather than algorithms to process the reviews. Uh, we have direct expertise in the subject matter of the review content, so they trust that we're making the right decisions on the reviews that get approved or don't get approved. Um, and they know that the reviews on a website uh, focused on senior care are going to be from people just like them uh, who had a caregiving situation. So it's going to be more relevant. Um, they're also trying to web your websites, uh, so you do want to share reviews on your website as well, and to government and healthcare sources. Um, but only a few are turning to sites like Yelp and Facebook. Okay, so now that you know they're important and where to focus, how to get them, um, and who to ask. Don't ask, uh, avoid reviews from your business associates, vendors, your chamber of commerce buddies, your industry pals. It may seem like low-hanging fruit. It may seem like the ones you can get reviews right away. 
but the senior care searcher is least interested in those reviews. Those are folks that may have a financial interest or an ulterior motive. You know, scratch your back, I'll scratch, scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Um, the consumer really wants to hear from other people just like them. So the folks that you want to ask for reviews are your cognitively healthy clients or residents, uh, their family members who have direct first-hand experience with your services, and the experts who work for consumers, so the senior move manager, the social worker, or the geriatric care manager. Those are the most valuable reviews. There's many opportunities to generate these reviews. Um, many businesses ask for them at their site. They put a sign up, review us uh, you know, on caring.com. We have badges we can provide to you. Many of the review websites have services with review generation to help you. Some of the larger senior care organizations are using reputation management firms to help them generate reviews. Um, one thing I suggest is when you get positive feedback from a client or a family member, that's an excellent moment to, to thank them and ask them if they'd be willing to share that feedback online to help others get to know their services and have a similar experience. You can also use your social media profiles. Um, and I've also seen uh, some home care agencies and senior living communities have the most success by doing direct outreach via email and phone to their uh, customers they know that have had a positive experience. Um, those are, that's a very effective strategy for driving five-star reviews. On caring.com, you have a listing form. Uh, most of the websites also have this uh, review websites. You can promote that to make it very convenient for that uh, client to post their review. Um, you want to focus on the sites that have a really easy process because uh, you don't want to add to the stress of your clients. Getting awards for your reviews is another way to generate more reviews. Uh, when folks rave about you, you deserve to be recognized. Um, we launched the Caring Stars Award Program in 2012. It was the first of its kind at that time. Now our 27 list includes a 400 senior living communities and home care agencies. They achieved a high volume of ratings and reviews, a handful of recent reviews. But what's really interesting, the data has shown us that these Caring Stars winners who have this high volume of reviews and positive reviews, on average, we've seen that they get twice as many inquiries and move-ins. So that, and this is analysis of partner listings. So Caring Stars winners who were our partners versus those who weren't um, had twice as many inquiries and moving. So that badge helps that consumer identify quickly that those were the best senior care providers and help them narrow their choices. Um, also, we just recently launched, in case you didn't see this news, uh, a partnership with Home Care Pulse for home care agencies that have relationships with both Caring.com and Home Care Pulse. This will be a new source to generate reviews on your Caring.com listing. And if you've won their Best of Home Care uh, Leadership and Excellence Award, that will soon be featured on your Caring.com Caring listing as well. Another signal to the senior care searcher that you offer high quality home care services. Once you get uh, reviews, even if you haven't won an award, you can promote those. Uh, it may feel like you're tooting your own horn, but it really helps the prospect. So when you're following up with them via email, maybe you include a short PS, check out our reviews on caring.com so they can see what others have said about your services and that will influence and leave a positive impression on those searchers. Okay, so we have oh, five more minutes. Five minutes. I'm sorry I went really fast. I'm happy to follow up with anyone afterwards. All right, let's see. Um, so we have lots and lots of, of questions here. I'm really sorry we're not going to get to um, any of this. Um, there were some questions about the speed to lead charts. Um, most of those, uh, the y-axis is conversion rate. Um, uh, there are some questions about is it counterproductive at some point to call too many times and the answer is definitely yes. Um, uh, I could see it being counterproductive to call three times in an hour. I'd be a little annoyed if somebody did that for me. But again, use your judgment. If it's a hot lead and somebody who really, really needs your services, then calling three times in that first hour is probably not such a bad idea. Um, uh, we've talked about leaving a message. Um, obviously, if you 
uh, I would not leave three messages in an hour. Um, I would leave one message the first time I call, and then the second time I call, I wouldn't leave a message. I'd just try again to reach them. Um, what I do when I make my own sales calls is I try to play the clock. So, you know, 2 o'clock in the afternoon and 10 o'clock in the morning are the most likely times for people to have meetings. So if I'm calling somebody in an office, um, those are not good times to reach people. If I'm calling a salesperson in a senior community, I try to avoid lunchtime because that's often when they have a tour and they're engaged with somebody and they're having lunch in the community. I'll tell you that for management people, for, particularly for women in management, lunch is a great time to call. I know that all of the women executives here at Caring.com almost always eat lunch at our desk. Most of the guys go out, but the women stay in. So, um, you know, 12.30 is a great time to reach a woman executive at her desk. Um, uh, let's see. Here's one. Um, What's your perspective on when to have leads actually connect to a sales department and not just HubSpot or some auto cloud-based manager once you begin digital strategy? Um, I, I mean, this is, this is a little bit of a tricky question, but I, I mean, I'm a salesperson, and I would always want that lead to go to get to a salesperson as quickly as they can. I don't even like the, the auto... Uh, the, 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 you know, press one to speak with so-and-so menu that, that we have here at Caring.com. We had to put it in because we just get a really high percentage of calls. But I'd much rather have the call go straight to, to the person. And in fact, um, if you get an email from me, you'll see my cell phone number right in that email because I want those calls to come in. If somebody's actually going to take the time to reach out to me, I want it to go directly to me and not to somebody else. Um, if, I, if we send out uh, newsletters or invitations to the webinar, again, that, the response to that email goes straight to the inbox of either Denise or me because we really do want to make the connection. If somebody is giving you the courtesy of actually responding to your outreach, I, I think almost every time you want that to go to a real person. Um, all right. Well, I am so sorry we're coming to this. The end of our time here. Um, um, uh, oh, just one other quick question. Um, there's something I don't always feel that the leads are truly vetted. What can we do about this? Some of my leads aren't ready to make a decision. If you get a lead from Caring.com and you want to give us feedback about it, please use the Provide Feedback button in the lead email. That is the quickest, fastest, and best way to get the information back to us. If the family advisor has not done their job properly, if you get somebody who is not properly qualified, please let us know um, using that provide feedback button. It's really, um, it, it's valuable information. It is honestly, uh, truly read right away by somebody on the management team. Um, we do pay attention. We do follow up. We do um, do quality checks when we get a response to a, a lead email like that from one of our clients. So um, thank you all for joining us today. Um, uh, to wrap up really quickly, um, urgency and frequency are both important. Um, you need to call quickly. You need to call repeatedly. Um, but not for everyone. Um, use intelligence. Um, use your good judgment. Prioritize the leads. You'll drive yourself crazy trying to call 10 times to people who um, aren't really good fit for your community or are out of area or clearly are not really um, that urgent in their search. Um, finally, uh, personalization is really key to success. It's key for email. It's key for voicemail. It's key for everything. Um, people like to know that they matter. Um, they like to know that you have actually cared enough to read the notes. So do it. It'll really help you in your sales. Um, our next webinar will be um, on Thursday, January 26th. We'll go through some of the things that, that Caring.com offers to our partners so that you can make the most of our partnership. If you're new to Caring.com or if you're wondering um, how you can get more leads or better qualified leads or, um, you know, have, have work better and closer with our family advisors, this is a great time to learn all of that.
Um, I hope you can all join us. In the meantime, uh, please reach out to us if you have questions, and thank you all for joining. Bye-bye.